Hello together and welcome to a new video by Ingenierdu. In this video we want to take a look on the flow behavior of bulk materials inside a silo and how the silo design will influence this bulk material flow. Here you can see a technical drawing of two typical silo designs and the corresponding flow. On the left side we have a silo with flat outlet funnel, while on the right side the angle of the outlet funnel is much stepper. Due to the design it is expected that the bulk material will flow in different ways. On the left hand we expect funnel or also called core flow. The material builds a funnel inside the silo and the bulk material flows from the top through the funnel to the outlet. On the right hand the whole material inside the silo is activated and flows evenly down to the outlet. But how does the design influence the particle movement? To analyze and understand the behavior of the bulk material inside the silo in general we designed a case study with different shapes of the silo bottom funnel. Each silo has a height of 5 meters and a diameter of 2 meters. The outlet in all cases has a diameter of 0.4 meters. From the left to the right the funnel angle is increased by 15 degrees each step. For the following simulation we will use parameters representing coarse gravel. In total we will fill the silo with 5 tons of material. The wall friction between the silo wall and the gravel will be 0.1. This is quite a low value but it can be understood as an already optimized selection of wall liner materials to improve the flowability. Here we can see the filling process of the silos from the front view. That means we are looking from the outside through the silo wall. The different colors of the six particle layers each represent the same numbers of particles or the same mass of nearby 830 kg. After the filling you can already see one major difference of the designs. While the first silo is just filled half, the right silo is nearby totally filled. Even all silos have the same height. Now let's take a look to the discharge process. When we are focusing on the material stream at the outlet, we can see that the level of mixing of different particles layers is changing from the left side to the right side. On the left side, we can see a high degree of mixing, indicated by the different colors of the particle in the outflowing stream. Also we can see that the silos on the left side are discharged from the top, whereby the red particle layer disappears first. In contrast, the discharging on the right side is layer by layer, beginning from the bottom blue layer with nearby no mixing. When we speed up the simulation, you can see that the mass flow rate also depends on the silo design. The right mass flow silo design results in a greater mass flow rate compared to the other silo designs. To understand what is happening during the discharge inside the silos, we take a closer look to the left silo with core flow and the right silo with mass flow. For this we cut the bulk material inside in half and take a look to the cutting surface. Now we can see the flow of the bulk material inside the silos. The histograms on the side of the silos mark the percentage of particle layers which are in the outstreaming material flow. On the left hand silo you can see how the funnel is built up inside and the red particle layer flows from the top to the bottom resulting in a high degree of mixing. In comparison the right hand silo shows an even flow without mixing. The layers are discharged one by another. In the final comparison we can summarize the results of this simple case study on silo designs using the discrete element method. In the filling process we could see that the funnel flow silo have a higher capacity at constant silo height. This is the reason why this design is most common in industrial storage of big amount of bulk materials like cereals or grains. Due to the funnel flow the particle movement mainly takes place inside the silo without sliding along the walls. This results in less wear. The main disadvantage is the mixing of the particle layers during the discharge which can be ignored in many application cases. If the material should be discharged without mixing to ensure a first in first out storage process, mass flow silos are preferred. The mass flow silos allow a controlled flow layer by layer. Furthermore, the risk of material remaining in the silo at the end of the discharge process is lower due to the step discharge funnel. If you liked that video, Hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment for any questions.